Hi everyone, we are back again with another wonderful project which is OVAS NetTacker. I am sure that uh, you would be curious that what this project is all about or uh, what this project does. Uh, so let me introduce my very good friend Sam who has taught me so many things about online uh, sessions even before uh, COVID struck us. Uh, Sam, why don't you introduce yourself and OVAS NetTacker, that what it is. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Sam. Uh, I'm uh, OWASP London chapter leader, and I'm also a leader uh, or co-leader of OWASP NetTacker project, uh, which is a relatively new project. Uh, I only found out about it recently myself. Uh, That's amazing. So uh, can you show us how actually uh, this project look and feel and what this project does? Uh, yes, so uh, this project is actually an automated penetration testing tool, uh, but it can be used for all sorts of uh, interesting things um, because it is uh, modular and basically it's written in Python and it uh, allows you to do uh, three different things. So it allows you to uh, perform scans of your network because originally it was um, created as an IoT scanner to scan for IoT devices. So it can scan the network, it can discover uh, your service, your hosts, it can scan for open ports. Uh, it allows you to scan um, your network. So it allows you to scan hundreds or maybe thousands of servers, all subdomains or your network, and you can check for one thing or you can check for many things. And because it does it automatically, so it comes as a command line tool and as a web UI as well. And you can also launch it in Docker. Uh, that's where it's uh, pretty cool. Okay, yeah. So this is what NetHacker is. It's an open source mm -hmm. software tool to assist with pen testing and automation, uh, automating information gathering and vulnerability scanning, scanning tasks. It's great because it's written in Python, so it can work on Windows, uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Another interesting thing about it that it was actually written by students, which participated in Google Summer of Code uh, program, and it was enhanced by students as well. So you can think of it as a Swiss Army knife because it's like a tool with uh, uh, many, many tools inside. Uh, so it has modular structure. So there's lots of modules you can add your own. It's very important that you can automate it. So um, what it has, it has a command line interface, web UI and API report generator. It also has Multigo transforms for people who use Multigo and it has lots of modules. I'm going to then show you, this is the uh, page on OWASP website. Uh, all the documentation is on GitHub Wiki. So if you're looking for installation instructions, you can find them all there. You can just clone it from GitHub and you can uh, uh, run it using pip install. Uh, and basically it's a relatively small project and you can download and install it in minutes and have it to running. Uh, again, a reminder that this is actually an offensive security tool. So you only need to scan, you only you should be scanning networks that you have permissions uh, to scan. Um, so it's actually quite confusing. So first when I run it and it spits out lots of um, modules and I couldn't understand what's inside. But basically, as I mentioned before, it has three types of things. It can perform scans for information gathering, vulnerability uh, scans for a specific vulnerability, or you can define a list or it can do brute forcing. Yeah, so these are like lots of modules that you can see on the screen that it currently has. All right, let's see if it's installed. All right, yeah, yeah it is installed. And as you can see, if you just start it without any parameters, it will tell you uh, how to use it. Basically, there are lots of lots of modules and it could be quite confusing for you to understand what it does. I'll just show you very quickly what you can uh, do with it. So. Uh, when you run NetTacker, you can basically, uh, you need to specify two important things. You need to specify the target, what you are scanning, and you need to specify modules, which modules you want to apply. So uh, you need to provide two parameters. So one is I for your target. So for example, uh, let's say I want to scan OWASP.org, right? And then I need to uh, define dash M, and then I have to list modules that I want to use. So for example, I can use a port scan module to perform a port scan. Uh, it's all lowercase, sorry, my typing. Or uh, let me run a subdomain scan. So subdomain scan is a very good thing to demonstrate what it can do. So uh, Nanataka is going, going to uh, try to discover all the subdomains of OWASP. There you go, and you can see how quickly it discovered everything. 
So why is, for example, this is useful? So for example, you can quickly find out all the subdomains exposed by a network and it's pretty useful, um, especially now there's a problem of shadow IT and people spin up uh, lots of VMs in different uh, um, clouds like AWS, Google, uh, Azure. And do you really know your assets? So this is where the um, information gathering aspect of NetTech is really cool because you can actually use it to discover all your assets. And just uh, to show you the power of it, what you can actually also do, um, uh, you can also chain several modules. So for example, if I want to chain subdomain scan with a uh, check for the server version, so I can go and, for example, add server version scan like this. Um, and it will try to see if any of the servers on the subdomain are actually exposing um, uh, the actual software what, that they're running, such as Apache, Nginx, or uh, ISY is it again useful so you know what service uh, you have, or if you are doing reconnaissance on someone else's network, um, you can find out if there's a particular version. For example, you can see we have a uh, host called OCMS, which is running Atlassian proxy, and it shows a specific version, right? So the, uh, an attacker might use this information to actually exploit the vulnerability if you're running an out-of-date version. But there you go. This is how it works. And as you can see, it's... Uh, we're gathering all that information, it actually solves this task. It basically will let uh, people to go and scan their network from inside or from outside, find out everything they have. There you go. You see, this is the table that I talked about, and you can output this into an Excel spreadsheet or into a, a uh, JSON file. And obviously, if you're a large organization, you will see like thousands and thousands of entries in there. But uh, it will it will show you exactly w which hosts that you have are vulnerable and what exactly it is is it that you have running. So um, that is one aspect of it. There is another uh, thing that uh, Netaka has is uh, it has a web UI. So you actually can run it um, uh, in a container or you can just run it with, in a web UI mode. To do this, you have to just uh, launch it and just say dash dash start dash API. Uh, okay, and, uh, and if I start it like this, um, Instead of the command, you can you will uh, see that it is running by default on port 5000. So you need to open a browser and uh, navigate to port 5000 to see what it's doing. Um, okay, so let, all right. Let's see if this works. So, and uh, you will notice it will also uh, output this API key. So API key is important because this is what we're going to use to authenticate. Because when uh, Web UI loads up, there is no um, authentication with uh, a like username and password. Uh, the only way to log in is using the API key. And this is what it looks like. Uh, at the moment, we are not logged in. So when you are not logged in, you cannot really do much. You can watch the tutorial, which will basically tell you uh, what different buttons do. Uh, but if you actually try to click on anything, it will complain. It will say, no, you actually need to log in first, right? It says, please log in first. Okay. So let me paste the API key. Obviously, once I paste the API key, it will say success, uh, your session is updated. And what we can do now is once it refreshes is we can do several things, right? So um, we can look, uh, for, first of all, we can perform new scans and we can look at the previous scans that were performed. So for example, this is the, the scan that I've just run, right? And you can see it like this, but the cool thing here is if I click on it, um, uh, it will actually show me the results in a, in a graph format. So let me see if I can get that working. Okay, you can see this, this is our OWASP.org. All right, and again, you need to uh, bear with me a few seconds because it renders a graph. And again, because it's running in my limited memory VM, it will take some time. There you go. So it actually created this penetration testing graph. It basically says it started the attack on OWASP.org. And these are all the various attacks that it started. And you can see all the various subdomains and you can see uh, all the ports open. You can see port 443, port 80 open here. You can see which uh, see, uh, content management system it discovered. 
and then you can see all the various subdomains. And again, everything that it finds is actually in this graph. So this is actually a very, very cool feature. And this is the uh, spreadsheet that I told you about. So this is everything that it's uh, discovered. Um, benefit to businesses to run this because uh, you get a spreadsheet and everyone gets a spreadsheet. Name me a, a single free tool that organizations can install today, scan their network and get the report in a spreadsheet. And OWASP and Attacker allows you to do it. Get a spreadsheet. This is amazing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, this is incredible. I am sure people are going to love it and they're going to contribute to the project. And whosoever is listening, please go ahead, uh, donate to the project, contribute to the project in any way possible. You can help and uh, uh, I am sure you're going to go and experience the project. So. Just take a look at it. Uh, this is really, really helpful. And I know um, my initial years and struggling with especially network scans. Oh God, it used to take me so much time. Now you have the tools available which are open source. So take help from it. Um, thank you so much, Sam, for joining us today. This was You're really very welcome, great. Vandana. Thanks for having me. And uh, I hope uh, many people will find uh, OWASP and Attacker a great tool to add to their arsenal and they will start scanning their networks and will start finding out um, uh, all the assets that they have and uh, everything which expires certificates and uh, any assets with vulnerabilities. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, uh, just check out for uh, the upcoming modules that we have. Thank you. Thank you.